So if you guys just open up your emails, the link should be in there. Mine's not working. Did you use a new one? What? It's your first name dot middle name dot last name dot nickname dot home address at student dot Northampton Public Schools dash kindergarten through twelfth grade. What about the password? Retina scan. Ow. Is that all? Thumb scan. Is that all? Nearly just your social security number now. Uh, I'm in. I'm Jared Smith, Senior News Editor of The Transcript. I'd like to welcome you all to Season 5. This week, The Transcript meets a new head coach of the football team, discovers why student emails were changed over the summer, takes an in-depth look at the recent primary election, and discusses the latest Colin Kaepernick controversy. The football team has had a lot of turnover in the recent years. Between losing key seniors and having several new coaches, the team has seen a lot of new faces. To find out how this affects the team, I interviewed the new head coach, Joe Colcott. How's the transition from Northampton High School? Well, it was actually pretty easy. I, I played here, I coached here. Uh, I haven't coached football for uh, three seasons after leaving East Hampton. So uh, it was just getting some of the uh, assistant coaches that I had in East Hampton getting together, meeting a couple times, seeing what we wanted to do here on the practice field and game field. I played high school at Northampton High. I played uh, two years at, a uh, year and a half at AIC College. Uh, then I uh, assistant coach here for eight years, two different four year stints. Then in uh, 1997, I started East Hampton football and ended in 2014. I also sat down with the football captains to understand their take of the upcoming season. What's my favorite part of playing football? <laughs> Knocking people on their behind. Uh, my favorite part about playing football is the physicality and the contact. Honestly, I don't really have any individual goals. As long as the team does well, that's all I really care about. Three different coaches in three different years is really hard to deal with. We've had to learn three offenses, three defenses, and it's been kind of rough. Having three different coaches in three different years is kind of tough, Learn, learning the new offenses, the new defenses. It's tough, but it's, it's all worth it. Because once that Friday, once Friday comes along and the lights come on, it's, no matter who's coaching, it's always fun. The football team has their first game tonight at 7 versus Amherst. Boys soccer has a game at 345 versus East Long Meadow. Girls soccer has a game at 345 at Westfield. Field hockey has a game at 730 in Agawam. And cross country has a meet on Tuesday at 345. I'm Nat Walton. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Last week, the president of the French Tennis Federation banned wearing a katsu on the court after Serena Williams' performance in the French Open games. Nice. In other news, You may have noticed that logging into your email is trickier than usual this year. I sat down with Molly McLaughlin, the Digital Literacy and Computer Science Coordinator, to find out why. The email changes were a direct goal of the IT department as a whole, so there are a number of reasons for it. Some of the re main reasons are because the simplest was because as our school expanded, the formula for making the email addresses has had to change because we had too many variations in how that was set up. But there are also reasons related to security for uh, ways that we put settings on the accounts. And so by separating a student domain from a teacher domain, it allows us to distinguish and differentiate between the two different accounts. If you can't get into your email address, you have the option of going to the tech integration specialist. That's Ms. Jobson. She has her office in the library. 
She has the ability to change passwords. Students also have the option to communicate with the IT department that is often in the building in the tech office. They have the ability to reset the password as well or help troubleshooting what might be going on with their email account. And then lastly, every Tuesday and Thursday and during second period, there's a help room that is being staffed by an IT member where students can drop in and see if they can get help specifically with their email needs. I took to the halls of NHS to find out how it affected the community. It's just kind of annoying to like, because everyone was so used to typing in the email and they'd have the same password. And now it's a different email and like your password was kind of changed and it's just it took me a while to log in at first and I keep forgetting my passwords. I think it was probably for a legitimate reason. It's pretty annoying, like to, it's a lot extra and like for us as seniors to memorize that. We're already hitting the senioritis grind pretty hard, so <laughs> I, I don't, it's Fast. not worth it for us, but I think in the long run, it's probably easier to, dis to discern between administrators and students. It's a very minor inconvenience. It's like maybe like five seconds longer to sign into an email. Yeah, just write STU instead of, you know, the, the old the regular thing. one. Yeah. yeah. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just a little annoyed because I'm starting to apply to college and I actually ended up losing a lot of information from my Common App account because my email changed and I couldn't get back into the account. So I'm a little annoyed. The emails are a lot harder to get into and since it just changed uh, last, this year, I'm used to the, the email last year so it's kind of hard adjusting to the new emails. I've, always, I've tried to get into it and I forget but I'm learning so. I'm Amelia Tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye! Hi, my name is Willa Sipple. And I'm Sarah Fina Foreman. And this is Tell It Like It Is. This past Tuesday, citizens of the Pioneer Valley cast their votes for a variety of candidates in the state primary elections. Primary elections determine which candidates will be on the ballot in November and are often looked at as indicators of political shifts in the state and national level. In our local election, we witnessed a tight race among candidates for both House and Senate seats. We wanted to investigate what themes may have emerged throughout the election and find out how our current political climate on a national scale influences our local election. Lindsay Sabadosa and Diana Zinal were the candidates for the House race. Chelsea Klein, Joe Comerford, Steve Connor, and Ryan O'Donnell were the candidates for the Senate seat. And disclosure, I volunteered on the campaigns of Joe Comerford and Lindsay Sabadosa. And I the campaigns of Lindsay Sabadosa and Chelsea Klein. We sat down with Northampton City Council President Bill Dwight to learn more of how the results of our election determine legislature's future of Western Massachusetts. The big difference is we lost a lot of seniority. And when Peter Cocott died, he was uh, he had established a lot of seniority and had a lot of power and position as committee chairs. It was in new. They're all the new kids sitting at the cafeteria table and they don't know anybody. It's going to take a long time to accumulate that amount of seniority in Boston that counts. In order to get any position of power, to get a chairmanship, to have to have any influence, you actually have to be there for a while or at least build coalitions. And to get a sentence of the work done on the ground for the candidates, we went to the polls to talk to some of the volunteers. I support Diana Zinal, first of all, because she's my wife, and I think she's the best candidate for the job. She's been doing the job for 16 years, working for Peter Cocott. I'm a huge advocate for her because I believe in her platform. I also believe in her as a person. I think she's been a servant her whole life. We want to establish somebody strong and powerful in this position. I think it's really important to have a female in there. It's so important to vote because if you don't vote, you don't count. And so let's say you have a town of a thousand people, which I'm in. If you only have 200 people that vote, that candidate could care less and will never show up to your um, town. I was really impressed with what Joe had to say. I was impressed with the way she said it. I was impressed with the way she thought about what she was saying before she said it, with the seriousness with which she answered the questions and the thoughtfulness and with her ideas. A lot of the candidates have similar platforms, but I feel like we need candidates who will be able to convince their legislative colleagues and really move forward, will be aggressive about a progressive platform. I'm voting for Steve Carter because I believe He's going to help the disadvantaged, the veterans, the homeless. To look at how these primaries will affect the nation's politics on a greater scale, we sat down with Howard Gold, professor of political science at Smith College. How did the 2016 presidential election influence what happened here locally? 
Well, as I, I think people were generally people are generally pissed off. This is not a local phenomenon. This is a national phenomenon. You see more people motivated to vote, more people following politics nowadays. Women are are dr dramatically underrepresented in legislatures and in, in Congress, in the House and the Senate. And so what you've got now are more and more women in the pipeline, and this can only have a positive effect in the future. How do people make the distinction when two candidates are very similar ideologically, they hold the same issue positions, they're both progressive Democrats, people will often decide on the basis of who's, who have I seen, which name do I recognize, and that's why organization is so important. The election took place on Tuesday and our community elected Lindsay Sabadosa to the Massachusetts House of Representatives and Joe Comerford to the Senate. Be sure to stay tuned for more information regarding the two candidates moving forward. Hey Earlier this week, Nike sparked controversy with the release of its 30th anniversary ad campaign featuring a photo of Colin Kaepernick with the text, Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. This ad is a reference to the campaign launched by the former San Francisco's 49er quarterback kneeling during the national anthem in 2016 as a form of nonviolent protest against discriminatory policing policies in the U.S. Since 2016, kneeling during the national anthem at sporting events has become a point of contention in both the NFL and society at large. All of this boiled to a head recently as individuals opposed to the company's ad began recording videos of themselves burning their Nike products. All these people smashing and burning things left a question burning inside us. At what point does frustration with a company's message validate the destruction of their product? And more importantly, can breaking a product out of anger be justified as protest? With this in mind, we set out on a reflective journey to examine what everyday products we protest on a daily basis. Um, render? Is that four hours? This computer's so slow. Yeah, mom. Yeah, I need a new computer. Yeah, it just broke, okay? Mom? Mom? Hello? Damn it, Verizon! <laughs> Insert more water? But I want it now! <laughs> Don't do that, what are you doing, man? Come on, put it that down. Just what do you, come on, come on. We love coffee. Thanks for watching. Don't forget freshman class elections are next Friday and join auditions for Almost Main and Waiting for Gatto will be in the Black Box Theater on this upcoming Monday and Tuesday.